Hey guys and welcome to this Train Sim Classic video. Today we are taking a look at the Armstrong Powerhouse TTA Wagon Pack Volume 1, another one of these Wagon Wednesdays additions to Train Sim, and uh, something that's great to see added into uh, the simulator. So we're going to drive the included scenario for a little bit, probably only about 15 minutes or so, uh, and then we're going to take a look at the whole range of wagons that you get in this pack because you get like 60 odd levies or something like that. You get an, a, you know an incredible amount with it. Um, but yeah, just just initially looking at the wagon, it's very nice, and we'll take another look in a few minutes. So what we're going to do first is we're going to get along on our way from here at Westbury. We'll set off, and then we'll talk about the pack as we go along. There is one scenario included with the pack, and that is the one that we're playing here. It's on the Just Trains Southwestern Expressways route to Reading, and uh, you drive it from Westbury, which is where we are here, to. Um, Bristol. It is the uh, well-known working six um, six C sixty two six V sixty two. Sorry, the uh, four or two tariff stop tanks. And uh, I'll go on to talk about that in a few minutes. I'll just let you enjoy this leaving for now. As is always the case with these AP wagons, you do get a great set of sounds with them. So all fully custom and everything. So yeah, we're driving uh, the working here, 6V62. Uh, I'll just go in the back here so you can hear the wagons as we go over these points. But yeah, 6V62, the 4 litre Tavistock tanks. Nice um, like buffer sounds and stuff like that, and uh, coupling sounds. Quite a lot of them I've heard before. I think that some of them sound like they're from the um, MGR wagon pack, but really, you're not going to. You care for stars, you can't really record every single wagon sound in the world, and uh, you're not really going to notice the difference, if I'm totally honest, anyway, of every single different noise you would ever hear on every single different wagon. So, yeah, it's really good to see these added in. Um, Obviously, for so many years, we've been messing about with those Kuju ones that came from way back in 2007 when we originally got Rail Simulator. You know, that's the age of the original TTAs that we've had. So to see a new set is uh, absolutely brilliant because they are, and always have been, a very common wagon on the British wag uh, network of freights. And, and indeed, they've obviously... Because of their age, the, the, the bear in mind the date back right to the mid 60s, I believe, even not even, not even early 60s. Um, they obviously have a lot of scope for scenarios. For instance, you know, you got wagons here that date back so far that they actually ran under steam. You know, for the first few years of their um, life, these wagons would have been seen hauled behind steam locos. There was pictures of 9Fs and stuff like that, and they would have, what they would do if, when they were hauled by steam is that we'd have to actually have a barrier wagon or two in front of the, uh, ste you know, behind the steam loco tender before you actually got to the oil wagons, because obviously a bit of a risk <laughs> with oil and steam mixed and fire and everything in between. It's um, not that you guess. A rather combustible combination, shall we say. But yeah, the, uh, the wagons look fantastic. They've been created again by uh, Bossman Games. And uh, yeah, there's some lovely detailing going on on there, especially like the uh, writing on here and stuff like that, and the decals. There are over 60 uh, liveries or variants, I'm told, in the pack according to the website, so uh, we'll have a look through all of those when we actually get 
to the end of this uh, little drive. So we'll, we'll drive this through to Bath and then we'll have a look at them all as we normally do. We'll lay everything out uh, in a set aside in somewhere. But yeah, the, uh, the all round detailing is very, very impressive. And uh, you can see the different weathered versions you got uh, here, and then you got a cleaner one. Just here. Now, 6V62, as it was, was a. It was sort of, a, I guess, an oil trip working. The grey wagons towards the back here, they contain fuel for St. Philip's Marsh, Lara and Long Rock depots. That's St. Philip's Marsh in Bristol, Lara depot in Plymouth, and a Long Rock depot right down at um, Penzance. So, what would happen is these wagons would get tripped down in this working. Some would leave the train at St. Philip's Marsh, some would leave the train in Plymouth, um, and then obviously an extra trip would go on to Tavistock. So, you also had in the, uh, until the mid 2000s, late 2000s, you had these wagons at the front of the train, and I love the weathering on those. Uh, you would also have these wagons on this work in 6V62. And these are uh, bitumen tanks. And these used to go down to Catawater in uh, Plymouth. Um, and that's what these are. So you would get these going down to Plymouth area. Now, the train went to, as it says in the top right off there, the train went to Tavistock Junction, which was a yard just outside Plymouth. It's uh, still there, it's just not used anymore. And uh, the train would terminate there. They would split off the wagons to go to Catawalk. So I think an 08 used to take, or an 09 used to take them down there, down the branch to, uh, to Catawalk. Whilst the remaining wagons, obviously, will be uh, some will be tripped into Lava, which is just around the corner, and then the remaining ones for Long Rock will be tripped to uh, to Long Rock Depot. Six V sixty two in itself provides awesome scenario opportunities. Obviously, AP has covered a thirty five minute section of it here, but even on Southwest Expressways, you could cover all the way from Westbury down to Exeter quite easily. Be a long scenario, but you could certainly do it. Um, so yeah, what would happen is that uh, quite often this train would vary in length. So you can see we've obviously got the uh, the bitumen tanks at the front and the uh, oil tanks, uh, the fuel tanks at the back. Now the fuel tanks would uh, quite often there'd be quite a lot more than that, and you see in photos, various photos. I'll, I'll probably upload a few uh, into the video as an overlay. Um, and quite often you would find that you had. A varying amount you would sometimes have loads on you would sometimes have less on like there is today and also with this working it used to have uh, a great variety of traction you quite often in the 90s would have 37s you get 58 60s even and obviously from about 2001 2002 onwards it was mostly 66s um and the reason i'm wibbling on about all this is that this shows the you know the, the scale of what you can do with these tta wagons is that they were so common on so many freights over the network over so many years that the possibilities with them in scenarios and stuff is pretty endless to be fair and um, there's certainly a lot there's a lot of scope for uh, using them but yeah I love the uh, I love the weathering and the overall detail is uh, is really nice just checking out when I get uh, stopped there by anything of course, you get the tail lamp and everything. You got the uh, brake pipes. Nice underbody detail on there. All the texturing. Uh, it looks to be a nice and high res, which is good. So we're just coming down to Bradford Junction here, and it's got a bit of braking done. So yeah, the, the TTA wagons, obviously they're a smaller version of a TEA tanker. So the TEA tanker is the big 100 ton tanks. Uh, the TTAs were a smaller version, 33 tons. Um, and they were basically more versatile. Obviously you could you'd put them in other workings and stuff like that. They would quite often go in. Certainly in the earlier days when wagon load freight was still a thing. You would see them in other freights sometimes. Um, but they were also around at the beginning of what were called block oil trains. Uh, and that was in the steam era, and it continued into the 70s where you would have what they call a block oil train, which is a train that was just oil. Uh, these days that sounds perfectly normal, but in those in the steam days, obviously, you got to remember that 
a lot of freight was wagon load or vans and stuff like that. When you had a set train of one fuel, it, uh, it quite often got the name block, like block oil for instance. So let's see if we can find those wagon flats again, because they sounded quite good. I'll let you listen to those. Yeah, I mean, they got a great uh, wealth of sounds in there, as they always do with AP products. It's uh, got a lot of stuff. Obviously, it's got the name Volume 1. Because there's so much you could do with the, the TTA wagons, I guess it's quite obvious that there could be a Volume 2. Um, bear in mind, remember that, obviously, Armstrong Powerhouse's uh, meaning of Volume 1 is not what a lot of people may think it is. It doesn't mean there's going to be a Volume 2. It merely means that it's Volume 1. There might be a Volume 2, but, you know, it's uh, it's Volume 1. Don't expect a volume to basically. Uh, I need to try and get a picture for um, the overlay. So I'm trying to take a couple of screenshots while we're here. Of a couple of these wagons just so I can make sure that I've got ample to play with. So, yeah, um, the other thing that I know, Neil, things that are coming to my mind that you can use these wagons on is again stuff like um the west highland in the west highland they actually used to on the, 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 the up to my leg i'm talking here they actually used to run a train from fort william fuel depot uh, well, onto the station and they would add a tta tank to the back of a passenger train sometimes more than one and it would go onto my leg behind the uh, in the in the formation of a passenger train so that's something that I might try and do at some point, and I'm sure hopefully somebody else may try and do. Um, is to actually recreate stuff like that, interesting stuff like that, where you can have a uh, an oil tank in the middle of a, in the, on the back of a passenger train. And uh, these wagons, obviously, they van everywhere. There's an example there, obviously, Malik. It's about as far away from anywhere as you can get. And this this working, for instance, went down to Penzance. So the scope of, of operation for them is uh, is fantastic. Some nice uh, AP scripted weather going on here. So we've got some rain. So we'll, we'll stop this in a few minutes. We'll probably just get as far as um, as Bath, as I said. And then we'll uh, curtail it and uh, go and look at what models are placed. In fact, we might do that, actually, in a moment. Because we've already been going 15 minutes. And uh, there's not really much else to cover in terms of just talking about it. I think what we'll do is we'll let it run through here at Avoncliff and then we'll uh, we'll go and have a look at all the models laid out since it's 15 minutes now and I, I want to keep this video to 20 minutes because it is a, it's a wagon pack at the end of the day it's not uh, not a whole thing where we're featuring a route when the route isn't the focus neither is the loco So we'll go now and we'll go and place some down and we'll have a look at the whole set in, uh, in a yard somewhere. Alright guys, I've got them all laid out here. So you can see all the various amount of the viz. There's quite a lot there. Um, all the ones on the front three rows, they are the clean variants of different variations of the liveries from the list. Each one is another livery set in the list. Within those livery sets, you then obviously have your three loaded and empty variants with different weathering. The back row is just um, some weather variants that you can see, and I'll show you them one by one as I go along as well. So we'll start at this tight end of the row um, with the BRT livery. Now, the only disadvantage I found with this pack, or the, only, the only negative of this pack really is, and it's a it's a comment I'd make across the these Wagon Wednesdays Wagon Packs, is that the manual seems a little bit vague on whether you should be able to change logos and stuff or not. I'm, I'm guessing you can, but 
obviously normally you, you can with AP products and also you, when you change things in the number string you don't see it reflected uh, as far as I can tell until you press play which isn't a major thing by any means it's just um, I'm not sure whether there's meant to be more liveries, less liveries or what I'm not entirely clear if it's just what you can see because obviously there's different variations of logos when you place them down you can see about 50,000 logos on the wagon so it's a bit confusing but that aside this is the BRT livery that you can see there and you've got then a BRT slash Charrington's livery that's also with the uh, gas oil stickers on uh, and then a Charrington fuel oils one and uh, these have got the ladders on the sides look they're really nice and the numbers and then the bits on top so the ladder on one end the buffers are nice as well they've got the uh, the oleo buffers this is again a charrington's one with two stars on it there and uh, another one and then you're moving on to these ones i'm not sure if these are another form of the brt one um with that stripe on or if these are shell but you've got the petroleum sector markings on there so that's good for uh, 1990 stuff obviously really and that's uh, more of a sort of plain black one and there's a, a good variety of these various different you know labels and stuff on them that's a pro gar pro car siba gay one gay whatever it is and then you've got the water tank which is an interesting one the water tanks uh you don't see many of them around calcium carbonate i don't have i don't have ever seen one of those working I'm, I'm presuming if you look at photos somewhere maybe in the speed link here i'm going to guess that's from um then you got some of these grey ones. So you've gone over the, the sort of different livery, various blacks and blues and stuff. Then you get onto the grey ones, which you'll see down there. There's quite a few. But these are the dark grey variants. So you've got our Gecko and uh, a VTG livery one. You then move on to the green livery one. So these are, you know, I'm guessing originally probably BP livery. Um, now, when I placed these, I'm sure they said BP on them in the name so i'm not sure why there's no bp logos appearing um i didn't see a branding patch have i missed a branding patch but shell oils is over there so i can't see how i have but uh just going to check the website <laughs> whilst i'm here um but then you got the various ones so you got like uh, jet one aviation fuel that so these types of wagons used to work for instance the is it the Lynxwood tanks? Um, or Luchas? The one up in Scotland, anyway, near Dundee, is where you used to see a lot of those working too. And uh, stuff from Grangemouth and, and stuff like that. Yeah, there's no branding patch on the website, so I'm not sure why I can't see any uh, sign of any BP logos on those. Uh, it did say in the name, I, I'm nearly sure it did. So again, more Al Gecko ones. These are a light grey variant. Pro core. And that's just a plain grey one. But uh, very nice detailing on them. And again, these are just the clean ones that we're looking at here. So these are the BRT wagons. STS. Just a great variety. Did various different BRT ones. There's loads of them. Pro core BRT. Cabe. Okay, but with petroleum branding and then all the various little labels on there. Carlos. Carlos Procore. And then that's a plain greyish one. That's a bit like the one we had on the 6v62 scenario that we were doing. And then there's the ICI ones there. So let's move over here. What have we got? We've got the LPG um, ones. A lot of these will be like the ones that the British, uh, the British Oxygen Company, is it? Or something? I can't remember what they are. The BOC delivery tank is the very, very white. That's just what Train Sim does to uh, to the white text. Obviously, you get the weathered versions, which there would have been most of the time. You don't really see that. So, liquefied petroleum gas. And again, various different ones of these. Wonderful details and a wonderful amount of liveries, it has to be said. Uh, bear in mind, this pack only costs six ninety nine. It's uh, certainly well worth that when you consider what some other wagon packs can cost you. STS. Again, another really sort of uh, all over grey one that you can use in many different areas, I suspect. Tiger Rail, now there's a name I ain't heard for ages. That's a fertilizers company one. TRL, Cabe with the petroleum, STS, plain grey with petroleum branding. Uh, and then these are some shell livered ones that you've got there. And then there's another couple of plain greyish ones, plain grey with petroleum branding. 
So you've got a various amount there. And then at the back here, you've got a few black ones. So these like bitumen, obviously, as we saw before. And these are TTA2. These have got the sort of angled ends on them. And uh, sort of more pronounced. If you look at these ones, look, they're sort of rounded. But the TTA2 has the pointed ends on them. And uh, these, like I say, these are for the bitumen mainly, rather than oil. Although they are still usable on oil as well. Uh, but when you see bitumen trains, the tanks of those are nearly always black. So yeah, look at the weathered version. I think these are, the weathering is absolutely top notch. It really is nice detail. You got the little oil streaks and stuff down, and the the, the these are all weather free variants. I think that's obviously a bitumen tank. You can tell with the weathering down the outside of that. And uh, as I say, with the with the LPG tankers, when you've got them weathered, that white doesn't become so glaring. And uh, various different. Uh, various different textures it's not just been copied and pasted for instance you can see that this one this one's different to that one and that one and that one they're all they're all done quite differently i guess the same technique will obviously be used throughout but these ones have got green lettering on that's just because it came from it's a ts bug that's not the wagons but yeah really 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 impressed with this pack it's good for 6.99 as i said the manual and the lack of info on what you can do with logos and stuff that's the only negative really um, yeah, I can't see really any Z fighting or anything like that. There's, there's a little bit, but not noticeable. So yeah, all in all, fantastic pack, well worth getting. And uh, thanks again to Bossman Games and AP for releasing these Wagon Wednesday packs. They fill in gaps gradually. There's a lot of gaps to fill, and I'm sure we could have a a full year worth of Wagon Wednesdays, and we still have wagons left that we need. But it's uh, fantastic work so far, guys. Cheers again. Thanks everyone so much for watching. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment. And uh, don't forget to check out Tom. He's often on Twitch Fridays and Sundays. Twitch.tv forward slash trainsim underscore TV. And uh, I'll see you later, guys. See ya. Bye.